Today we're at the University of York talking to Catherine Arnold about her recent trans bee issue. Welcome. First of all, can I ask how the issue came about and what its major themes are? Yes, so there's growing evidence that um, pharmaceuticals um, are being detected in different parts of the environment, different ecosystems. So lots of studies are showing that pharmaceuticals are out there and what we wanted to do was pull together the, all the existing data and also some of the new research showing potential effects on wildlife and ecosystems and also measuring the exposure um, to wildlife and ecosystems of pharmaceuticals. How do pharmaceuticals get into the environment? There's different ways. So the main way that human pharmaceuticals get into the environment is that, so if you and I take a medication, if we take a paracetamol or, or an antidepressant, for example, it goes through our system and some of it gets excreted and metabolised and it ends up in sewage treatment works. And from there, it ends up in the environment in different ways. So we know that, for example, some um, animals, some birds and bats, feed directly on all the invertebrates that are living on the sewage treatment works. So they're potentially exposed to quite high levels. But also, um, once the sewage treatment work has done its work, um, some of it ends up in streams and rivers. There's effluent, there's low concentrations going out into aquatic environments. But also, now that we're no longer allowed to dump sewage out at sea, which is a good thing for the marine environment, there's a lot of sewage sludge which needs to be disposed of. And some of that is used as a fertiliser on agricultural fields. How do you assess the concentrations of different levels of pharmaceuticals that are, are present within fertiliser and in the environment? Well, a lot of this is technology driven. So the reason why this was so timely is that the technology for analysing very low concentrations of pharmaceuticals in quite messy biological matrices, like things like sewage or blood plasma or animal tissue, um, is that the technology has become so much more sensitive in the last um, five, five or so years. And so we need very accurate and sensitive systems to do this. One of the best known effects of pharmaceuticals is the effects of the drugs in HRT and the pill and these hormones, these uh, synthetic hormones affecting um, fish, male fish in particular, and, and feminising them, causing them to be sterile. So this is one of the, the major effects uh, uh, and most well-known effects in aquatic ecosystems. In terms of terrestrial systems, m very poorly studied in comparison. We're just starting to get some new data out and that's going to feature in the special issue that's coming out soon. So just going back to the fish example that you um, referred to, obviously that would have implications on future reproduction and population levels. Could you describe the kind of impact that that would have on an ecosystem, say? Yes, so we know that it has effects on individual reproductive success. Um, and the next stage is that we need to establish whether or not there are population level effects. And this is really difficult because you're looking, if you, unless the, it's a really major, for example, die off or decrease in a population, it's very difficult to look at the effects in the wild of, of pharmaceuticals. So this has been quite problematic. There's some evidence that it might be causing population level effects from a very nice study done by Karen Kidd in Canada where they experimentally elevated the levels of EE2 in an experimental lake in, in Canada. And what they found was that there were it, species of fish varied in how sensitive they were to the direct effects of the hormone. So some species, there was a, a decrease in the population um, immediately and others there weren't. Do we know much about the long-term effects of pharmaceuticals in the environment yet? In terms of wildlife, um, we don't know a huge amount. Uh, what's interesting is that, so if you and I take a pharmaceutical, um, we'll follow guidelines. It might be that it's contraindicated for certain times of our life. So if we were pregnant or if we were a child or whatever, you wouldn't take a particular pharmaceutical. Yeah. And you'd only take it for a short period of time in most cases, unless you had a chronic condition. But of course, what's happening to animals in the environment, they're quite often being exposed continuously to a cocktail of pharmaceuticals and yeah. other contaminants throughout their lives, right from um, embryo through to, through to adulthood. And what we don't know is what, what the long-term effects are on, on animals. And how are um, pharmaceuticals different from other contaminants, like um, pesticides, for example? Pharmaceuticals are a really interesting contaminant study because, of course, 
they are specifically designed to have um, effects on um, physiology and in some cases behaviour, so something like an antidepressant, it's designed to affect behaviour at low concentrations. And that makes them different from other things like pesticides that you mentioned, because um, which work at much higher concentrations and are specifically designed to effectively kill, mm. kill a, uh, a certain type of animal. So they're potentially potent and they're potentially quite, um, they can have, potentially can have quite subtle effects, um, which makes them interesting to study. So one of the things that came out of the special issue is that we think there needs to be more research looking at sublethal effects of um, pharmaceuticals on wildlife. So looking at changes in behaviour, not necessarily always look, just looking for these big dramatic die-offs, so the big mortality events or major reproductive malformations that you might see in response to some hormones, but looking at more subtle uh, sublethal effects because of course um, an animal that fails to forage properly or that doesn't perform the right courtship um, displays or that doesn't escape from predators properly, they mm -hmm. won't reproduce, they won't survive in order to, uh, to, to make it to reproduction. And it might be that um, the effect is actually the designed therapeutic effect of the pharmaceutical. So for example, it might be that um, an animal is exposed to a painkiller and its pain threshold is decreased because it's um, having the benefits of having essentially taking yeah. a dose of, of, of a headache tablet. Yeah. Um, but then it, what, what are the negative effects? Are there any negative effects? Are they more likely to carry on fighting or to um, carry on chasing um, a prey and overexert themselves because they aren't feeling pain, for example? Yeah. Or in case of an antidepressant, um, if they become bolder because they've taken this and that's the therapeutic effect, um, does that mean they're more likely to get eaten by a predator because they're taking yeah. risks that, yeah. that aren't appropriate for their environment. Can you tell us a little bit about the paper that you contributed to the special issue? Yeah, so um, some colleagues and I, including a, my PhD student Tom Bean, um, we've been working on birds foraging at sewage treatment works. So um, in many cases sewage treatment works are fairly open and there's lots of, part of the processing of sewage is that there's lots of invertebrates involved, so worms and maggots and other things living actually on the filter, you know, the sewage treatment works. And um, lots of animals are attracted by the high amounts of food there, so birds, bats, um, are all known to feed at, at some sewage treatment works. And of course, at sewage treatment works, there's relatively high concentrations of pharmaceuticals because this, this is before the sewage has been treated at all. So things like worms are, have uh, quite often got high, relatively high concentrations of different drugs. So Tom um, has been measuring the concentrations of the antidepressant fluoxetine, the trade name of which is Prozac. He's been measuring the concentrations within the worms and using that to calculate what a bird feeding on the sewage treatment works would take if, if it was... Um, living in and around there and it was eating most of its food from the sewage treatment works. So we used that to then calculate a dosage of, of um, fluoxetine and we then um, did some experiments working with starlings. So we were exposing starlings in captivity to an environmentally relevant concentration of fluoxetine over the winter, so over about a six month period. Mm -hmm. We looked at changes in behaviour and physiology. And one of the interesting effects that we found was on foraging behaviour. So the antidepressant fluoxetine, it's designed to change behaviour in humans. Um, but what isn't so well known is, well, what's the effect of fluoxetine on a perfectly normal, non-depressed animal? And um, so we know that it changes behaviour in humans, but it also has some side effects and it can also change um, appetite in humans. And so it's interesting that we also found changes in foraging behaviour in birds. What's the, the future looking like for forming policies to help ass assess the risk and assess further effects of pharmaceuticals? So of course um, pharmaceuticals are subject to high standards of safety testing in terms of their effects on the human patients that they're designed to treat. Yeah. Um, less well developed is, is their environmental effects. So there's um, some suggestion that there might be changes to some EU level legislation for example through the Water Framework Directive. There's three pharmaceuticals have gone on a newly formed um, watch list, um, one of which is diclofenac and the other one, uh, the other two are synthetic hormones um, that are going on to this uh, newly established watch list and basically it's gathering evidence. At the moment there 
because there are so many financial and social and health benefits of pharmaceuticals, yeah. we can't just have an outright ban on certain drugs yeah. because they have some potential effect on wildlife. The evidence base isn't there yet, um, so at the moment we're gathering data uh, as a research community and hopefully that will then feed into future environmental policies at the EU level. And it could also be that there might be evidence for changes in prescription patterns. So if we know that there are really negative effects in the, of the, in the environment from certain anti-inflammatories, for example, it might be that there's a change in prescribing patterns mm -hmm. such that ones that we know that are safer for, the, for wildlife or ecosystems are prescribed in place of them. And ones that work equally as well. Yes, as the, yeah, and yeah. That, that's important yeah. because we, you know, they, obviously pharmaceuticals have a massive um, health benefit and we, you know, we need them. With, a, with an expanding and ageing population, we're increasingly reliant on pharmaceuticals. So we know that yeah, that's an issue. Okay, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank, thank you. you.